もう前のめりで拍手をしてるね、学生さんもいらっしゃいました。ありがとうございます。えー、もうすぐ、県知事もこちらの会場に到着されます。何かお預かりしましょうかそしたら改めてパネリストの方々のご紹介もさせていただきます。多分今の拍手で、かなり会場の雰囲気も良くなっております。生産の皆さんの思いも伝わっているかと思います。あ、到着されました。あ、今、知事も到着されたようですよ。拍手でお迎えしましょうか。ようこそさあ、それではこうして皆様にお揃いいただきましたので、始めてまいりたいと思います。改めて本日8月6日という広島にとっても、まあ、世界にとってもとても大切な日に、広島県、そして平和創造機構広島ホープ、そして国連軍縮部、国連ユニタールが共催しますアイデアコンペ、平和かける〇〇、核軍縮と持続可能な未来にお集まりいただきまして、そして YouTube 配信でご覧いただきまして、誠にありがとうございます。まずは、えー、核軍縮不拡散や持続可能な未来のために世界的に活躍されているパネリストの皆様をご紹介させていただきましょう。まずは、広島県知事、平和創造機構広島ホープ代表でいらっしゃいます、湯崎秀彦様です。よろしくお願いいたします。続いて、国連軍縮部より、国連事務次長、軍縮担当上級代表でいらっしゃいます、中水泉様です。よろしくお願いします。Thank you for joining us. そして、国連ユニタール持続可能な繁栄局長、広島事務所長、熊本美穂子様です。よろしくお願いいたします。オフィスさあパネリストの皆様をお迎えしておりますが本日の主役はえここにお集まりいただいております39名の10代から20代の皆さんですえ本日お昼から10人のグループに分かれて平和かける〇〇について自分たちならではのアイデアを得るそしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにしてみんなの話を楽しみにして They have discussed four SDGs. SDG 3, good health. 5, gender equality. 9, industry innovation and infrastructure. 13, climate action. The four WASI members are made up in one group. Do you have the discussion? Now, please raise your hand. You are in the Sushi Go. Please, discussion. Raise your hand, please. Thank you. All five teams, please raise your hand. ということで、えー、これらの全チームがアイディアを出し合って、And、さらにそのプレゼンシテーションについて、全チームがアイディアを出し合って、さらにそのプレゼンシテーションについて、全チームがアイディアを出し合って、さらにそのプレゼンシテーションについて、全チームがアイディアを出し合って、さらにそのプレゼンシテーションについて、全チームがアイディアを出し Just a moment ago, all selected teams are decided, and then they will make their presentation. And it is going to be followed by the expert opinions from the panelists. Directly here, 
in person for me. Now, I'd like to proceed to have the opening remarks by the panelists. First of all, I'd like to invite Mr. Hidehiko Yuzaki, Governor of Hiroshima, President of Hiroshima, for a global visit. The floor is yours, please. Thank you, Mr. Governor. For a global visit, the floor is yours, please. Thank you for the kind introduction. I am Yuzaki, the governor of Hiroshima Prefecture. Today is perhaps the hottest day in Hiroshima history. Thank you very much for joining us today in this extreme heat for the youth pitch event. 78 years ago today, I think it was a sunny day like today without any clouds and left one atomic bomb in the sky of Hiroshima and it had a major, a catastrophic impact, not just to Hiroshima, but to the world. On the 6th of August, on a hot day, and we need to reflect on that day. And we have a role all to remind ourselves what happened on this day. And today, here we are holding this youth pitch event, Peace by XX, Nuclear Disarmament and Sustainable Future. Thank you very much for joining the discussion on this theme. The world uh, security is under a lot of pressure. Russia invaded Ukraine. And there are conflicts between countries and becoming harsher and fiercer. It might not be true for Japan, but uh, there are some disparities and disputes inside one country, even in democratic democratic countries. So we are under uh, this pressure and hard, strict reality. And G7 summit was held in Hiroshima Prefecture in May this year. I believe you may have been engaged in some of the events held here. The uh, leaders of uh, the G7 nations, as well as other nations, participated and joined the uh, summit event, and it was very meaningful and significant. And through uh, the leaders' behaviors and commitment, uh, it was an opportunity to learn and understand uh, what atomic bomb can do to human lives. And Hiroshima uh, has a strong disseminating power. Today, young members attending to consider uh, disarmament, nuclear disarmament, and a sustainable future, and looking into what uh, young people can do, what young people should do, must do. And I am very e e looking forward to hearing your presentations. Your ideas will be streamed on YouTube in English and Japanese to the world audiences. To the audience around the world, drawing a lot of attention from the world. And we hope that your ideas will raise public awareness and encourage many people all to take ownership of these issues. We look forward to hearing your proposals. Good luck. Thank you very much, Governor. Now I would like to turn to Under Secretary General and the High Representative of Disarmament Affairs. Ms. Nakamitsu, would you please? The floor is all yours. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Izumi Nakamitsu. I was just a moment ago by the governor of Hiroshima. I thought that it might be the hot, hottest day in of Hiroshima. I entered in this room. I felt that it's so hot, maybe because of your energy. I like this kind of the event. I have been really looking forward to take part in this event. I am working for the UN, especially for the disarmament areas. 
And in today's peace memorial, the uh, ceremonies, and, uh, as you see, the normal the weapons and the disarmament and the, the war might be waged in the space. In the future, many kinds of the biological weapons and the chemical weapons, the varieties of the weapons. And our mission is to control these weapons as much as possible. And these days, we spend a lot of time for the advanced technology, inclusive of the AI and the cyberspace attack. We need to have more robust norms to control this cyberspace. And there are no, uh, the, numerous new things come to the fore because we need to have that safer world in the future. The crux of NACTA is, of course, the nuclear weapons. As long as we have the nuclear weapons, as uh, was mentioned by Governor of Hiroshima, he made a tremendous uh, uh, amount of the speech, for instance, a very amazing and moving speech. Uh, the abolishment of the nuclear weapons is the way to make the world safer. This is the ultimate goal of the world. Uh, this is uh, one of the priorities of the disarmament office at the UN, UNODA. But we cover a variety of the range of the things uh, back in the 7th of 20th of this month, the new agenda for peace policy belief was uh, uh, sent by the UN Secretary General. And the point is, of course, the disarmament. And the disarmament and SDGs, how it's relating with each other. And we are making an effort in the disarmament and how it's going to have the contributions to the SDGs. We have the negotiation with so many people, so I'm thinking about the process uh, to make it happen. So, I have been very looking forward to hear your ideas in this moment. In fact, thinking about 78 years ago, what happened to this city should never be happened again. But thinking about the future as so important and interesting for me, what is the future is like in the far distant future? I do not want to be so pessimistic. How beautiful the world is going to be and how we can make the effort to change the world in a better way. I like to imagine such a future perspective. So please keep this in your mind. And I'm looking forward to hear your opinions and presentation. Thank you very much. ママさんにそんなプレゼンがこれから行われると思いますよろしくお願いしますあの、ママさんにそんなプレゼンがこれから行われると思いますよろしくお願いしますあの、ママさんにそんなプレゼンがこれから行われると思いますよろしくお願い
hot topics, uh, difficult issues and challenges. We need to uh, approach them and address them in a, a new innovative approach. And it's important to engage you uh, with young thoughts. You can change things, you can make changes uh, with new ideation. So we are all really looking forward to hearing to you, your presentation. There's a lot of attention on you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the strong message. Now I would like to ask the facilitator and who joined the discussion this afternoon, Managing Director of Peace Culture Village, Mr. Kenta Sumitani, the floor is all yours. Good afternoon. I am Kenta Sumitaka. Uh, from Peace College, Culture Village. I have been supporting you to prepare the presentation. Please stand up for members. These are the supporters for you as well. Yes, indeed. In this event, in this venue, you are going to have the opportunity to make your presentation on the potential females as the Hiroshima and Europe for the future, how they can make the contribution to the peace world in the future. And your message uh, is going to be sent to the people around the world. And with this in our mind, we prepare a presentation. There's many challenges uh, around the world. It's needing the solutions. But each one of you, has to, first of all, come up with the vision on the future world. Uh, this is the first step in our discussions. In order to achieve such an ideal world in the future, what is the challenge you are faced with needing the solution? What is actions to solve these challenges? Are, are the basis of this presentation? And uh, thinking about the vision, I feel that you are so excited and you, you look so cheerful. And when it comes to the discussion regarding a challenge, you feel pessimistic. And what kind of educational actions are required of the very good quotes? Maybe the presentation we are going to have is not the right single answer, uh, but I feel the enthusiasm of you behind your presentation, uh, the hope of the youth and the aspiration of the youth. I hope this is going to be sent to the people around the world today. And just to prefer this uh, session, so we have selected the representative teams. Are you nervous? Please feel, fun, feel confident to give the presentation. And today, we prepare the presentation, but this is a, just a starting point. So we live in the Hiroshima. What kind of contribution we can make for the peaceful world uh, toward this action and goal? This is the day one. So please give your presentation with this in your mind. And I hope these three panelists will listen to the presentation very sincerely. And I hope other people around the world will support these you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, we'd like to proceed to the presentation by the selected teams. First, we would like to ask goal number three, good health and well-being. Team, good health and well-being. May I ask you to come in the front this way, please? We have six minutes per team, and the total time is six minutes, six minutes per team. Are you ready? We'll pass your microphone. There are two microphones. Oh, we can use another one. 
Over to you. The floor is all yours. Good afternoon. We had a group work, group work to discuss on peace and medical care. First, I would like to introduce ourselves. Myself, I am Airi Okuyama. In Go Global Low Future, and I'm also as a health delegate and learned about uh, nuclear waste. The trigger, what triggered me is that I wanted to share my thoughts and discuss with young people at the same generation, uh, and I thought that that will all enlarge and expand my views. I'm Yoshiki Kawamata of Hiroshima Nagisaku High School. I also all took part in the uh, UN group, and I also went to a school or trip to Hiroshima Memorial Museum, and uh, also all participated in a program to uh, to do a guide, a tour guide of the Hiroshima Memorial Museum and the uh, Peace Park. In daily lives, do not have so many opportunities uh, to talk and hold dialogues like this. So I took this opportunity to participate today. Thank you. I'm Yuga Hashida. The reason why I chose to join in here is that I participate in Global Future School and I was introduced of this event. I wanted to gain more whole new knowledges and I wanted to exchange uh, with young people like me. So all three of us are participants of Global or Hiroshima Mirai School. So uh, today our theme is peace by medical care. Due to COVID pandemic, pandemic a lot of lives were lost and uh, there were disparities between countries. Uh, we e focused on this point. There are people who are underserved, who are not receiving the medical they de medical care they deserve. So uh, we have thought what we can do for them. First of all, in order to live, there are necessities like medical or facilities and medical services. This is indispensable for us. When we catch cold and have fever, uh, we can go to uh, visit the clinic and uh, doctors and receive medical care. However, in developing countries, that might not be the case. Uh, depending on the uh, facilities and services, uh, they may be underserved. So uh, we want to uh, have everyone uh, be served, make sure all that the medical facilities are, are enhanced and sufficient. And uh, we want to expand the scope of services available. As explained, this is a necessity uh, for human being to live. But now I would like to share uh, what we can do to further enhance what we have. First of all, is education for all, uh, to make education available for all. To uh, undernourished countries, we want to make sure all that uh, indispensable or pharmaceuticals are available, medical cares are offered, and the medical or technologies are offered. From these points, for people to live, we find it uh, necessary uh, to provide education. For those uh, who are underserved, we want to make sure all that they are addressed. And uh, we thought from two approaches, first uh, from a national or level, and the other is uh, what we can do as an individual. First, as a country, dispatching medical professionals, in developed countries, there are a lot of numbers of uh, medical professionals, uh, so people are served. But when it comes to developing countries, one doctor is serving tens of thousands of people. So 
by sending and dispatching a medical professional from developed countries to uh, developing countries, uh, we will be able all to uh, provide medical services to more people. And the next level is uh, what we can do as individuals, fundraising, volunteer activities, participating in these events are one approach, and also holding dialogues uh, with people of the same generation. You may be able to find a new perspectives and learn from different perspectives. So I think uh, joining these kind of events would also all help. These issues uh, cannot be solved with one person. It requires cooperation and support from others. It requires people all to hold hands in hand and work together. Living in Japan, like me, I don't uh, necessarily feel all about the underserved medical or situations uh, where facilities are insufficient, but I would like to use my imagination, learn about things and uh, think thoroughly. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a great, great presentation. That was goal number three. Thank you for your great presentation. では次のプレゼンをしてください。ゴール Thank you very much for sharing uh, your presentation. It was very interesting. May I share uh, what I thought? First of all, investing education is very important. I think it's an important point. Why I feel that way is because dispatching medical professionals and the developing countries uh, are providing opportunities and dispatching medical professionals is also very important. But we want the developing countries to have the cap uh, capacity and capability. We want to develop that in the developing countries. Otherwise, developing countries will uh, be dependent and reliant on developing countries. So uh, focusing on education and investing on education is very important. Uh, that will change the uh, situation uh, from the front line. Oxley vaccine is also common and important for vaccine. Ox when COVID pandemic hit the world, the biggest issue was how to uh, deliver and uh, disseminate the vaccines to every corner of the world. And in the end, the vaccines were produced in developed countries and passing them to the developing countries. That was the final conclusion. But for a better resolution, the manufacturing sites of vaccines should be made in developing countries because pandemic COVID is not the last pandemic. We are thinking ahead what pandemic would happen next. So what if that happens? Uh, we, if we have manufacturing sites around the world, uh, that uh, will help us swiftly address vaccines delivery. And in order to do so, in African countries, uh, there are initiatives uh, to build vaccine manufacturing sites. So to develop the capacity in the uh, front line, into uh, to different corners of the world is very important and investing in those activities is important. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Nakamitsu. Next is goal number nine, industry, innovation and infrastructure. The floor is all yours. Good afternoon, everyone. We are goal nine. Goal number nine, a journey to peace, like a board game Sugoroku role-playing game. The goal that we are aiming for is a society allowing all individuals pursue what they want to and live themselves happily. In order to realize this, we need a world without nuclear weapons. So let's embark on this role-playing game. We are the uh, four 
members, myself, I am Yumi. The reason why I joined this idea pitch, I wanted to think about the peace and SDGs. So I wanted to also all use my ideas and ideas here for my future. The reason why I participated in this idea pitch is that I made this year a challenge, a year of challenge for myself, and I wanted to participate in events uh, that is unique to Hiroshima. I am Anno. I heard first-hand accounts of Hibakusha, atomic bomb victims, and I thought myself, what I can do, what can I do as an individual, and thought, I found this event, and I thought that exchanging opinions, holding dialogues uh, with uh, people at my age uh, would be that opportunity. This is, I am Yuko. I was in global peace activity and I moved to Tokyo or after graduating from high school, I didn't have so many opportunity to join these kind of events. So oh, I came back uh, to rejoin and restart. Uh, we will take a step at a time to uh, approach our goal. And I believe there are different skills necessary. First of all, the first uh, skill we want to acquire is to put yourself or put myself in one in someone else's shoe because there are different justices depending on different perspectives and it's important to understand and comprehend the differences number two is dialogue holding dialogues I believe uh, this is uh, holding dialogues with other people with different ideas and perspective. Please look around yourself. There are people with different gender, age, and home country. And there are people from Hiroshima. And I think this is an opportunity to raise one skill or to hold dialogues. And it's important that we share our thoughts with people from different perspectives. Third step is education. It has to be education of equality where available to all. We live in Hiroshima and learned about peace. There's a peace education. However, uh, the focus is mostly as a victim of war, but we also need to think of our offensive activities uh, and think what we can do. So we can deepen our thoughts uh, through uh, both sides. And it's not Hiroshima and Nagasaki alone. I think it's everyone uh, to think about peace. And by learning, it's not just about nuclear disarmament. It drawn our eyes to different uh, peace activities. And there are a lot of benefits and advantage. And sometimes there are conflicts of opinions. We don't necessarily have the same thoughts. So it's not to uh, deny someone else's thoughts. It's uh, to utilize and leverage the skills of dialogues uh, to make sure no one's left behind and hold an opportunity uh, for us to share. Next is technology. Uh, this is a bonus point. Once uh, we acquire and attain technology, uh, it will make it easier to hold dialogues and education. When it comes to uh, dialogues, I believe uh, you, you use a lot of tools like Zoom to uh, discuss online. But next step is avatars or holography uh, that we can reproduce whole body and uh, use it for or holding dialogues or perhaps using avatars and VRs. In this manner, uh, we will be able to hold dialogues across borders. And next, like VR, we may be able to immerse ourselves and uh, experience. Perhaps like Auschwitz or Hiroshima or 9-11, we, we may be able to reproduce uh, the experience like we uh, go through it ourselves. 
Or we might be able to uh, reproduce the experience of atomic bomb in Hiroshima uh, where we can't do uh, in reality. So once we get the skill, technology skills, we will be able to thoughts. Can, may we receive your comments? RPG. I thought uh, we are in different uh, generation. I thought like uh, red, green, like the three colors of uh, old TVs, uh, old televisions. I think uh, this goal was industry and innovation. It's not uh, how we can change the industry. I think it was uh, to look beyond what's behind industry, and I thought it was a great approach. It's not just a superficial uh, approach, because things won't be easily changed from superficial all thoughts. It's about the dialogues, education, and exchange. So. And based on that, uh, using technology on top of it, I think it's very important what you presented just now. Let's roll out to this journey of RPG. What do we need to attain at this? The last boss. Maybe you know the last boss. Uh, let's overcome and beat and defeat the last boss. Now we'd like to turn to the next team. Next boss, uh, goal is our team, so climate action. I'm from India, uh, and I'm a member for Youth for Disarmament. Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine. I'm currently a second year college student in the United States. How can we achieve peace through tackling SDGs number 13 and nuclear disarmament together? So in order to answer this question that we've posed, our ultimate vision is that we want to convince states to shift their budgets from nuclear spending to instead spending on climate change and also other SDGs. One thing that we noticed while doing our research was that um, from countries like the United States to also Japan, nuclear spending has just continuously gone up and gone up. So we want to convince them that this is, well, this is not great because it's contributing to climate change issues that we posed here, like global boiling, nuclear waste, ecological damage, and also resource loss. So in order to you know, combat these issues, we want to shift spending to climate change and to other SDGs instead of on nuclear spending. そう、少しうまく翻訳できるかわからないんですが、私たちのビジョンはえっと国家予算をえっと気候変動対策えっと国家予算を貿易費貿易費の方ではなくえっと気候変動の方へシフトするというようなものです。えっと、これにはグローバ
あの小学校の頃から、えー、核爆弾のことを学んだりすると思うんですけど今はそれが広島だけなんですよねだから世界中の学校で、えー、平和な平和に平和のことを、えー、学ぶ機関が、えー、あるべきだという、えー、アクションプランですでなんでこの平和の教育が必要かというと、えー、グレタさんが、えー、小さい頃から環境のことを学んでいてグレタさんが活動し始めた時にあのそれをテレビで見た人やインターネットで見た人がはこういう問題があるんだということを学びそこから、えー、地球を守ろうという動きが、えー、大きく、えー、と行われたと思うんで、えー、グレタさんが環境のことに関心を持っているように、えー、平和のこと平和について関心を持っている、えー、若者を育てたいという、えー、プランです、えー、ま,何まず何を学ばせたいかというとまず、えー核爆弾の影響、核爆弾を落とした後の影響や核爆弾の恐ろしさともう一つ学ばせたいのが、えー、ソフトパワーです。ソフトパワーというのは、えー、軍事力や経済力によるものじゃなくて、えー、対話による、えー、国と国との間の、えー、解決と、はい、解決です。で、えー、ここに、えー、すごいあの理想上の図になるんですけど、えー、教育をすることによってあすいません少し見にくい、えっと、教育することによって、えー、平和に関心を持ってる、えー、ソフトパワーを知ってる若者が育ちこの若者たちが、えー、いずれ世界のリーダーたちになってくると、えー、他の国と問題があった。そこで、えー、すぐ軍事力に頼るのではなくソフトパワーを思い出して、えー、核爆弾の恐ろしさを思い出してじゃあ軍事力じゃなくて対話で、えー、解決しようと思,思うことにより、えー、軍事に使う費用,あ費用じゃない、えー、っと予算予算が、えー、減りますそしてとうとう予算、えー、っと軍事に使う予算がなくなると予算がどこに行くかというと SDGs13 番などの SDGs にその予算を使えるというとても理想上の図になるんですけど、まあ、若者としてその現実にとらわれずにその理想の世界を描いて行動していくのが私たち若者の仕事だと思うので。はい、希望を持って行動していきましょう、えっと、最後になるのですが私たちがこの教育というものに、えっと、焦点を当てた理由は彼女たち国内外から来た彼女たちの広島や長崎で受けた教育だったりとかイン,センインセンティブなどをと通してやっぱり教育というものの必要性だったり平和教育平和活動の大切さというものに私たちは、えっと、フォーカスをしましたこれで以上で終わりますありがとうございましたありがとうございました。素晴らしかったです。では、お席へお願いします。じゃあ、続いてラストのゴール後の皆さん、代表チームの皆さん、準備をお願いします。では、その時間をお借りして、パネリストの熊本さん、今の感想をいただいておりがとうございます。これ、日本語で,ですかあ日本語で大丈夫です。はい、ありがとうございました。ありがとうございます。あの、本当にありがとうございます。あの、とてもいいポイントに着目しているなと思います。Main points you focused on. Very good idea. Education and software power and budget. Especially, I agree, you focus on the education and universal education. As of now, education in one region should be transported to the different region or not. This education should be universal ones so that everybody would think about. But the impact of the newly opened youth. So, universal education is a key. And the second point is regarding the budget. It's very practical and realistic viewpoint, and it is a very key point. Very good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we'd like to invite the last team, Team 5, Achieve Gender Equality. I am Ono Aina from the Fukuyama High School. I took part in this other event last year as well. I have a great interest in the peace and education in front of all of you. I feel so great to have such an opportunity to speak with you. 
I'm from Hiroshima Shudo High School. I am returning the second leader. Now, I am one of the uh, global relationship future school of Hiroshima. And this is why I'm here today to take part in this event. Hiroshima Akisa, Senior High School. I'm with Isario. Nice to meet you. Our future ideal world is that a uh, peaceful world for each one of us. For that, I think that the peace times education holds the key. The first element I can think of is the free education. Now, in Europe, from the preschool, elementary school, junior, senior high school, university, all of the educations are for free. And I think this example in the European countries are very good. Japan should follow such an initiatives in the future. In so doing, there are two advantageous points of the merits. The first merit I can think of is that the education, if it's made free, uh, the many people who go to the advanced uh, the schools in Japan, there are some who are my friends because of the financial issues after the graduation of the senior high school. Some of my friends cannot go to the universities, but they have started to work. If you are to provide a free education, even to the university student, these numbers of the people will be smaller. The second point is that, and in that way, we are able to see more children because in Japan, the people in the 20s and 30s, the youth in Japan, I do not want to have a child because in bringing up the children, it's so costly, but they have no deep pocket. But by the free education policies, the people who do not want to make the want to make the children will change their ideas. And what's your idea? The second point is that peace education to children. The education to children is very important because now, because uh, the opinions of the community tells us that education in the children is taken a little deeply, and then if you go close up to be an adult, uh, this education you are provided when you are smaller, is taken very deeply. For example, if you are small children and you are provided the opportunity to uh, think about the peace, then I think these people, when they are going up to the adult, will never ever wish the war. And then uh, these people will pass down this peace education to the children again. From, from the longer span, so this is a way to change the thought and the policy of the national government. Thus, I think the peace education to the children is very, very important. Thank you. Next is the equal education. When it comes to the equal education, you can tend to think of the gender the inequality or the inequality amongst the countries. First of all, we have to think about the gender inequality. Uh, we are in Japan, we cannot be free from such a problems. But in Japan, we are quite free from gender inequality. But in the overseas countries, sometimes uh, when you are at the girls, you tend to spend more time at the homes and no great opportunity to receive the education. This picture should be avoided. Talking about the literacy in Japan, it's close to 100%. Everybody can read and write. But around the globe, the children sometimes cannot go to the schools. Uh, therefore, they cannot read. 
that litters. So here is the question to you. Now, amongst the children in the world, we cannot go to the schools. Please raise your hand if you think about uh, such a children as around 1 million or 10 millions, 100 millions. Some of you raised your hands. Uh, you are right. Uh, those uh, children should be smaller in its number because the thoughts of the parents who are thinking that education is not required for the children. If they think in that way, there's no school to provide education to the children. So making a donation to the NGO to build the school is one way to prevent such a picture. And the peace education is another thing. We live in Hiroshima. So on this date today, we go to the schools and watch the peace ceremony. It does take for granted us. But when you go to the Okayama prefecture, this is not the case. Are they all thinking that the peace education, uh, best education provided in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we should wide open our eyes to have the uh, peace education as a universal education around the world. And we have the discussion in this way, like the peace times education. What we can do by each one of us are very many, uh, the, uh, many ways to do so. Donation is one way. But take actions by on your own. So to team five. Thank you very much. Any comments from Nakamitsu-san? I agree with the opinion to focus on the education. But I have one comment. My thought is that your suggestions, all of your suggestions are very, very important. But please take a look at around the situation um, that to be sensitive to the inequality. SDG5 uh, is the gender equality. As you know, in Japan, Gender disparities around the world is almost close to the lowest ranking. Uh, this year, like 125th out of 140 countries, or 141 countries, Japan lacked 125th, lower than the Saudi Arabia. So, without your notice, there are so many gender inequalities lampant in Japan. Please detect it and think about a way to solve it and eliminate it. That's very important. Just like you, I uh, uh, was issued a passport at the age of 24. And when I went to the overseas for the first time at this age, I came to realize that there are so many gender inequalities around the world. So please think about it to detect and making the deep dive. And the crux of the matter is the education. Making this, this effort in this way is the way to build the peaceful world in the future. Thank you very much for your comment. Thank you very much for the presentation given by the whole selected team. So please give them a big hand. Now we would like to ask the panelists to give comments and advice. Four minutes each from the panelists. May we please receive your thoughts and advice from Ms. Nakamitsu. May we please receive your advice comment throughout today's full presentation. Through today's event, it's very important to look ahead, imagine the future. The United Nations is uh, also adopting the same approach. This is strategic foresight. It's, it's, it's an approach called strategic foresight. And what I mean by this is that first think of the ideal status where you want to be. 
there are a lot of struggles and difficulties. It's not to start from there to how we can change. It's about how, what is the ideal status? What is the future we envisage? That's the first step. And then, it's not one, just one scenario. There are so many scenarios. So, oh, scenario A is the ideal status where you want to be, and there is a dystopia. The scenario three and uh, B, it would be something in between. So it's about think of different scenarios and to as much as possible create a well or that is closest to your idealistic world. And it's uh, a backcasting and think what to do at the moment in order to achieve what you want to be. So it's called strategic foresight. And the United Nation is taking this approach as well. So or nuclear disarmament as well. We use the same approach, like AI. What if there's no restrictions of artificial intelligence? What would happen or otherwise? How can we effectively use it, use it, and what the world would be? Leveraging, uh, best use, leveraging the artificial intelligence, and what to do by backcasting the actions. This is actually uh, a very front-running approach to think about the future. So. I heard that you held discussions in your team from 12 o'clock this afternoon, taking this new approach, and I'm very encouraged to, and encouraged to hear that, because I love thinking ahead of our future, what happens when the space technology develops and we find aliens reaching Japan or reaching the world, and we're living in harmony. What would be the future? What would be the world when aliens live in harmony with us? To live in coexistent? This is something we do in reality, like traffic coordination in space, because there's no traffic coordination in space at the moment. So the competent authorities are thinking about the satellites. It's not about spaceship, but because the uh, satellites are very congested, we're thinking of uh, space traffic control and thinking about space debris or, or space uh, waste because there's so much of them. And if we don't take actions, it will be an unfavorable situation for us. So we are thinking ahead what we can do at the moment. So, oh, this is your world. You think, I want you and encourage you to think what the world you want to live in. And today is the first step. What to think and what to do. Please share it with your or surrounding people and enlarge the circle of discussion and dialogues. And I hope that you would enlarge the circle of learning and strategic foresight. Thank you very much. It was a very a lovable or lovely moment with you. Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to turn to Mr. Yuzaki, the governor of Hiroshima. Thank you. As was mentioned by Nakamitsu, so strategic foresight or backcasting, I like that to see the future. And from that, doing the back calculation is very important. And as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, we heard three groups and one group. All of you focused on the education. So please not think about the way to see the back side of the coin, i.e. that Mr. A and Mr. B are not in the friendly relations, but to make them friendly. This is not the solution. You have to think about the why why we are not making the political relations. And then we start A, example, that's like the smell of the some agent used by Mr. B. And why 
uh, they are using he is using this because my sense of order is not as good as Mr. A. So in this way, if we make the deep time, you will come to realize what needs to be solved. And by solving this one, is the way to have the complete solution of the problem. Of course, and uh, we are living in a very compounding uh, complex of the world. It's not that simple to come up with the best solutions. I hope you to make the deeper dive to detect the crux of the matter of the problems. And then please come up with a hypothesis to think about the way to come up with the potential solution and try it. And if it ended up in a failure, please try again. So many of you focused on the education. And what is the education? Education is the very basis of everything. And what kind of approach you are making? What is your thought process you are having? All of them are coming up from the value you have had when you are small. For example, uh, the non discussion regarding the gender gap. You said that if you take a closer look at it, for example, in the cartoons in the newspapers, maybe you read it just as it is, the role of the mother and the fathers are fixed. The father goes to work and the mother at home and having so many sweets and get fat and others. So each one of these pieces in the cartoons are used for the education. The education at school is one thing. Education through the society is another element. See, in this way, your value are built in a piece by piece manner uh, to, so to say, have the bias. But thinking about SDG's goal, why it's not going well as you expected? I think this is because of the bias. So education is very important to be free from such a bias. And you are quite aware of this importance. I feel it's great. And some of you mentioned that the dialogue is very important. You see, someone wants to change the world by use of force. I'm not just talking about uh, Russian invasion to Ukraine. And the same things happened in the democratic countries to use the force to change the country. But the dialogue, if you want to depend on the dialogue to change the world, it's time consuming and energy consuming, but it's very, very important. So please keep in this important element in your mind to continue to take the actions. I, I, uh, uh, the four teams, um, uh, the, everybody's are making the very good presentation. Yes, I would like to make a few points. Learning, studying, we tend to think of going to school on a simple old manner and remember things, but learning is not necessarily so. There are different levels of learning. Remembering, memorizing is one, the first step. So that is gaining new knowledge. And then there's a step to analyze and then to make proposals. And the further you go, you deep dive to learning. And to go to the master level is using the knowledge knowledge, you can flexibly use the knowledge. And today's pitch event, 
is to deep dive the uh, knowledge you have. It's, it's to analyze and make proposals. So oh, you've utilized your thoughts and learnings, analyzed it and made a proposal. So you have deep dived into step three already. So when you continue your learnings and study, I understand that you memorize a lot of things in school, but I would like to ask you to further go ahead to deepen uh, your learnings. So joining these events would be one approach. And then there are other opportunities for you to leverage. So uh, may I ask you to challenge uh, and keep on your uh, good work. And I also like to mention on point two, this is in relation to the first point. Learning is not just from teachers. It's a lot to learn from uh, your colleagues or your team members. So oh, we split into many teams and understand uh, the mentors uh, were attending you. And there's a lot to learn from the mentors as well. So oh, through these events, uh, you'll be able to build a new uh, friends and friendship. So oh, please develop new friendship. And number three is pitch. It's a presentation. When you grow up and become an adult, I'm not sure oh, what professional or you will or become, but presentation is always, always accompanied by any occupation. So oh, today you made a great presentation. Please practice, 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 so you can brush up your skills of presentation. You can further enhance it, and not just in Japanese language. When you look around the world, English is becoming a common language. There are a lot of people who can speak fluent English, but also oh, would you polish your English presentation skills because the skills necessary for all English presentation and Japanese presentations are different. So oh, please uh, develop yourself into a talent uh, that can uh, be capable or, or working worldwide. And number three, point number three, you are mostly located in Hiroshima and doing activities in Hiroshima. Some people are based in Tokyo, some people are based abroad, but Hiroshima is a site of peace and it's a strong disseminating point of uh, peace and the nuclear disarmament. So please take that in mind and think about the SDGs, the goals of SDGs, and I would like to ask you to continue your efforts and your activities. Thank you very much, and it was a great presentation you made. Thank you. Thank you. We heard great message and comments from the three panelists. Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity because this is a rare opportunity. We would like to open the floor for questions. We would like to have a question and answer session. I understand uh, through group work, you may have had uh, been challenged. Uh, you, may have, you may have had questions. So if you have a question, please raise your hand and designate the person you would like to receive the answer from and ask your questions. Is there anyone? I'm from Hiroshima University in the fourth grade. My name is Ikeda. Thank you for giving me the great opportunity. I have a question to Governor Mizaki. In my group, we had a discussion regarding the nuclear disarmament. And in that, we had a discussion regarding the nuclear deterrent, and we studied about it. In your speech in the morning, I listened to your speech to notice your strong opinion to the expert of the nuclear deterrent. In the Hiroshima vision of the G7, you have touched on this point in your morning speech. In your speech, in my opinion, so you do not directly criticize the vision. What's your take as a governor of Hiroshima about the Hiroshima vision? 
はい、えー、のありがとうございます。Thank you for your question. とてもいい質問だと思うんですけど。It's a good question. 広島ビジョンというのは、これは初めて。広島ビジョン is the one for the first time in the G7 summit meetings to declare a this mission inclusive of the nuclear armament. As a document. In the past, this kind of message was incorporated as a part of the document. But it's not the main point in the past. Let me explain the context. In the world, I dare to say, the sun are thinking about the enhancement of the nuclear weapons. But please wait. Stop thinking in this way. Our goal is the elimination of the nuclear weapons. And this message was incorporated in this declaration. So, uh, some people are heading toward the right, I don't know, right or left, I don't know. Anyway, enhancement of a new weapon, this opinion should be checked by the leaders. This is a very meaningful message in that. And in the mass media these days, they are saying that nuclear deterrent as a taken for granted and it's positive. Some lead in this way. Please read through this document very deeply, very carefully. The point is that as long as nuclear weapons exist, it's stated in this document, nuclear deterrent, when you think about it, but not mutually assured destruction. How can I say? It's not the power of the balance. It's not the point, it's the only point. And the other viewpoint is to react to someone else's actions. This is a negative nuclear deterrent. The expression as long as means that taking up active actions by nuclear deterrent to go for the peace, it's not that way. In the reality, we have the nuclear weapons. As long as we have the nuclear weapons, if someone tries to abolish this nuclear weapons, it's very dangerous. In order to not to see such a picture, i.e. that one way enforcement of the elimination of nuclear weapons has to be avoided. That's the point of this message. So please not to be influenced by the mass media. But I dare to say the nuclear weapons has existed. We have to take it for granted. So we have to make one step further. Uh, that by the amalgamating the forces together with you, you can make it. Thank you for your suggestions. I try to lead through this message again. But I think that uh, not only you, but uh, there are so many people are having some misconceptions. Uh, the opinions are very much swayed by the opinions by the mass media. It's not only you. Thank you for your questions again, and thank you for your response to the question by the government. Thank you very much. I would like to ask one last question. Thank you. Thank you very much. When we came up with ideas, nuclear disarmament is a very familiar word for people in Hiroshima, but people from other regions, and when I talk with others, some people said it's not a familiar word and it's a difficult theme, difficult topic. For us, as one idea, Maybe we want to change the word nuclear disarmament or disarmament into a more softer, a more familiar word to make it more easier uh, to approach. What do you think? How can we change the word uh, disarmament? Is there any idea, uh, Ms. Nakamitsu, may I please ask you? That's a, a very interesting idea, the soft. How can we make the word more acceptable? We had thought of similar things before. Disarmament is not necessarily the case, but 
This armament comes down to really technical discussions, uh, technical discussions of a lot of expertise. So for a person, a general person living a life who find uh, detached to uh, the word disarmament, and I feel it that way too. And there are several reasons behind this. For one thing, the focus is mostly on the technical aspect, and only the expertise were uh, participating in the disarmament discussions. And I think this was quite a long ago, but the uh, Secretary General and I was talking directly, and I uh, remember him saying, if we want to expand disarmament, we shouldn't use jargons. We shouldn't uh, contain the discussion within experts. We have to make it so that it can be communicated to children or, or elders. I think it was in 2008 uh, that I held this discussion with the Secretary General. So therefore, when I talk about disarmament, I try to avoid using technical jargons. Disarmament may we don't necessarily have to use the word disarmament or change the word disarmament. But I think we can make it more or approachable and acceptable. I think this is similar and common to other uh, issues. Like if the discussion is within the technical circles or expert circle, it won't uh, be really solved. We need to make it comprehensible. So. And we think about it, disarmament it has a lot to do with our own safety. It's uh, really close to our lives and close to uh, ourselves. And I think it's an area of our concern. So we have to think of a better communication. But I would also like to invite young people, like you said, in a soft manner, a soft language. What would be uh, a more approachable language uh, that will all give the sense of ownership to more people? And I think almost all group mentioned about the word dialogue, holding dialogues. So we say uh, developing uh, trust. This is uh, how we approach it in uh, foreign affairs. But if we say the word dialogue, it's more acceptable or than developing trust relationship. So uh, holding dialogues would be more approachable. Thank you very much, Ms. Nakamitsu. Uh, you asked me what I think. I'm a HOPE delegate in Hiroshima or HOPE ambassador in Hiroshima. And I also uh, participate in Crane for Future activities, uh, disseminating information on SNS. I saw it this morning. So I participate in this activity. So it's not the language itself, but the paper cranes is shared. And in this manner, uh, we are sharing our, our thoughts and visions uh, for our future peace, our world peace. So I think I would like to uh, continue my efforts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was a great uh, trigger and opportunity to think uh, deeply. I would like to now close the uh, question and answer session. Today, we have Hiroshima youth. And in addition to that, we have uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima and people who joined the uh, United Nations projects. We also have special guests uh, who participated in these activities. We would like to hear about uh, the local activities. I would like to first invite Ms. Nozomi Nojiri. Ms. Nojiri is a uh, Nagasaki University School of Humanities and Social Science and also a member of Nagasaki Youth Delegation. The floor is all yours. Uh, 
Hello, everybody. I am Nozomi Nojiri. As was introduced, I am a university student and activist in Nagasaki. And actually, I'm from Miyazaki. I am a junior of the Department of Global Humanities and Social Science in Nagasaki University and was the members of the 10th Nagasaki Youth Delegates from November 2021 to September last year. After the end of the term, I have continued to work for peace in the peace caliban and officially recognized the Philippine University. Today, I will briefly explain my peace activities in Nagasaki. Nagasaki Youth Delegates, as a representative youth from Nagasaki, was dispatched to attend the 10th NPT Review Conference as an observer in August last year. And to be honest with you, I met Ms. Nakamitsu back then. And there, uh, we were given the opportunity to give the presentation at NGO Room and had a talk with the ambassadors from the countries. In the 10th delegation, there are seven members and the six out of seven, including me, were not from Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As being a member, not originally from a bombed area, I feel embarrassed. I sometimes wonder if I was a qualified peace activist. However, by shifting the paradigm, we broadened the concept from the bombed prefecture and the other prefectures in Japan to Japan and the world. With this in mind, we incorporated our message in the presentation, appealing to the people that the challenge of the nuclear weapon is existential and that everyone in the world would be the potential hibakusha after those in Japan. These activities in the 10th delegation delegates for stance to this message. If you take a look at Japan, the opportunity to receive a peace delegation or to engage in uh, peace activities is disproportionately concentrated only in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, the thing is to give equal and fair access to the information of nuclear weapons and peace education, not only to the European bombed area, but all youth, regardless of their background. Last week, let me briefly introduce Peace Caliban Group. I found a request from elementary school, junior and senior high school and local governments uh, from uh, in and outside of Nagasaki. We provide the best lectures about peace and nuclear weapons, and the content is carefully tailored every time. Most of the requests from schools other than Nagasaki has to give lectures at the time of the visit to Nagasaki as one of the destinations of the school excursions. With the aging of Hibakusha, the opportunity to hear testimonies from Hibakusha in person has been banished. So uh, it's very important to put emphasis on passing the belt on to the young generations. But Nagasaki should be the last victim city. The scope of Hibakusha has to be passed down from generation to generation. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm from India. I completed my master's in international peace studies at Soka University, Japan. I'm also a member of Youth for Disarmament, Leaders to Futures. インド出身です。日本の創価大学で国際平和学の修士号を取りました。Today I want to share my journey and how my interest in abolishing of nuclear weapon began. 今日は私がどのように核兵器廃絶に関心を持つようになったのか、その道のその道のりをお話したいと思います。It all started back in fourth grade when I learned about atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki from the social science book. I studied it as an historical event to pass my examination. 小学4年生の時、社会科の教科書で広島と長崎の原爆投下について学んだのが始まりです。試験に合格するために歴史的な出来事として勉強しただけでした。Little did I know that this event would later shape my passion. Dr. Daisaku Ikeda, the founder of my university, said Something that struck with me, if nuclear weapons epitomizes the forces that would divide and destroy the world, they can only be overcome by the solidarity of ordinary citizens, which transforms hope into energy to create a new era. 
この出来事が後に私の情熱を形作ることになると思いませんでした。創価大学の創設者である池田大卒先生、大卒博士の言葉が心に残った。核兵器が世界を分裂させ破壊しようとする力の象徴であるとすれば、それを克服それを克服できるのは希望を新しい時代を創造するエネルギーに変える一般市民の連帯だけである。These words inspired me to pursue a master's degree in international peace studies.At first, I thought only scientists could tackle this issue, not someone like me. この言葉に触発され、国際平和学の修士号を目指した。最初はこの問題に取り組めるのは科学者だけで、私のような人間には無理だと思っていました。I started participating in conferences. And discussing the matter with my friends and family. しかし、勉強を深めていくうちに、私にも変化をもたらすことができると気,が気づきました。学会に参加したり、友人や家族とこの問題について話し合うようになった。In February 2020, I had a chance to hear the stories of Hibakusha in Nagasaki. Their experiences moved me deeply to tears. 2020年2月、長崎で Hibakusha の話を聞く機会がありました。被爆者の体験は私の心を深く響きました。Later that year, I participated in UN75 Hiroshima event on August 6, the exact date the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. 原爆が投下されたと同じ日の8月6日に広島で開催された UN75 広島のイベントに参加しました。Sitting in my hotel's lobby, gazing at peaceful Motoyasu River, I realized the gravity of the historical Moment. A glance at the clock marked 8 15 a.m., the precise time the bomb fell 75 years ago. ホテルのロビーに座り、穏やかなモテヤス川を眺めながら、歴史的な瞬間の重大さを実感しながら、時計を見ると午前8時15分を指していました。An ordinary airplane flying by reminded me of the potential horrors of nuclear weapons. It hit me hard. I don't want to be Hibakusha 2.0. I recalled how the bomb altered Japan's fate in just 40 seconds. 普通の飛行機が通り過ぎるだけで核兵器の恐ろしさを思い出されました。その時私はひらめいた。被爆者バージョン2は嫌だ。原爆がわずか40秒で日本の運命を変えたことを思い出しました。Participating in the UN75 conference, I pledged to prevent such a tragedy. From repeating, I joined Peace Boat, an NGO, and contributed to their Every Second Counts for Survivors Peace Boat Hibakusha project online. UN75 Hiroshima の会議に参加した私はこのような悲劇を繰り,かさ繰り返さないことを誓いました。Peace Boat という NPO に参加し、1秒でも早く被爆者のために Peace Boat 被爆者プロジェクトオンラインという取り組みに貢献しました。This initiative lets Atomic bomb survivors share their stories and strengthen global connections among people working to abolish nuclear weapons. この活動で被爆者の体験談を共有し、核兵器廃絶に取り組む人々の世界的なつながりを強化しています。Listening to Hibakusha's testimony and sharing the story of Sadako Sasaki, I realized the survivor's pain is beyond words. But I also understood that younger generations can prevent t o Can act to prevent similar sufferings. 被爆者の証言と佐々木貞子さんの話を聞き、被爆者の痛みは言葉では言い表せないものだと実感しました。しかし、若い世代が同じような苦しみを防ぐために行動できることも理解しました。I took it upon myself to raise awareness about the ongoing threat of nuclear weapons. It's alarming that nine countries, including my own, Possesses more than 12,500 nuclear weapons which continue to threaten all humanity. しし the only way to ensure that there are no more victims of nuclear weapons is through the complete elimination of these weapons. 核兵器の犠牲者をこれ以上出さないためには核兵器の完全廃絶しかありません。During this journey, I participated in a set of workshops organized by UN Office of Disarmament Affairs Youth for Disarmament Initiative, where youth leaders meet with experts to discuss various aspects of nuclear disarmament and its intersection with development, gender disparity, the Secretary General's new agenda for peace. 
outer space multilateralism, emerging technologies and diversities. この旅の間、私は軍縮部の Youth for Disarmament Initiative が主催する一連のワークショップに参加しました。そこでは若者のリーダーたちが専門家たちと核軍縮のさまざまな側面や開発、ジェンダー平等、事務総長の平和のための新アジェン,新アジェンダ、宇宙、多国間主義、新興技術、多様性との関連について話し合いました。私 Our discussions led to some important recommendations. Show the value of non military option and improved quality of life. Amplify the voices of youth, Hibakusha, and civil societies. Create a system of checks and balances for international agreements. Engage in conflict prevention and resolution. Raise awareness about excessive military spending negative impact. Enhance reporting mechanism for military expenditures. Assist victims of conflict. And focus on climate change, establish verification mechanisms for disarmament commitments. 私たちの議論はいくつかの重要な提言につながりました。非軍事の選択肢を生活の質の向上の価値を示すこと、若者、被爆者、市民社会の声を広めること、協定のチェックバランスのシステムを構築する、紛争予防と紛争解決に取り組む。過度な軍事費の悪影響について認識を高める。軍事費の報告メカニズムを強化する。紛争の犠牲者を支援し、気候変動に焦点を当てる軍縮。軍縮公約の検証やメカニズムを確立する。Interestingly, while no SDG explicitly calls for nuclear disarmament, the broader aim aligns with SDG's goals of achieving a peaceful, just and safe world. Abolishing nuclear weapons contribute to global well being and security for all. 興味深いことに核軍縮を明確に求める SDGs はありませんが、広範な目的は平和で公正な安全な社会を実現するという SDGs の目標と一致していますね。核兵器の廃絶はすべての人のための世界の幸福と安全保障に貢献する。In conclusion, I urge everyone to remember that working towards nuclear disarmament isn't just for scientists and policy makers. Ordinary citizens, students like myself, and those participating in today's session can contribute and make a difference. 最後に核軍縮に取り組むことは科学者や政策立案者だけのものではないことを忘れな,忘れないでほしいです。私のような一般市民や学生、そして本日のセッションに参加した人々も貢献し、変化をもたらすことができるんです。As a Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for your large attendance. I feel your passion and energy in your discussion, and it's particularly interesting the event. I'm taking this opportunity. I know you feel embarrassed and nervous. I feel you're quite confident in making the presentations. You feel so great to see it. And the three panelists, thank you very much for your comment. It's a great opportunity for them to actually see you in person who are the peace activists. Uh, today is very meaningful. Yeah, your original peace activities, if you can do it, it's a way to make the peaceful world together with you. 
For the first time together with you, I heard your opinions on if possible, please think about a way to make the peace full order by thinking about peace times something else. And Hiroshima, there are so many wonderful, talented youths. I hope you are going to support these talented people and youth in Hiroshima. Thank you very much for your participation. And for those who are watching this live stream for the one and a half hours, we have heard the opinions from the youth regarding their challenge. Going forward, local development and the sustainable future, we are going to provide more opportunities to have the discussion and take actions. And then, that's the end of the live streaming. Please raise your hand with the camera. And that's the end of the live streaming. Thank you for your participation, for those who are watching us through live streaming. Thank you. Thank you. と思われます。さあ、それではここでせっかくなので。